Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing boundary conditions of reflection and transmission. So, what are the boundary conditions? Let us go to the slides. So, uh, consider waves propagation, a wave, a wave propagation through two strings tied to each other at one end at x is equal to 0. So, let us consider this as string 1 and this is string 2. So, you are tying it in a knot and uh, you are assuming that the wave is propagating in the x direction. Because now we are showing no waves but you, you will realize once you uh, uh, try to discover, try to analyze the wave propagation in a string there are supposed to be Suppose you shake the string, so there will be an incident wave. When uh, Due to that incident wave, there will be either a reflected wave or a transmitted wave or both. Now here, tension will be same in both strings. However, wave velocity V1 and V2 are very likely to be different because they are two different strings. The left side of the string will correspond to x is equal to 0, which is also correct because you are moving in the x directions and you are the knot is starting at x is equal to 0. So, your left side you will take it as x less than 0 and right side you will take it as x greater than 0. Now, consider the incident wave C. So, incident wave will have m1 or mu1, k1, v1 as its properties. The wave is, the velocity is in this direction. That is, wave is propagating in the positive x direction. So, our wave x, uh, our equation of the wave which we have learned previously will be f of i. The function will be ai. ai is the amplitude. E i k 1 x minus omega t. Here string uh, 1 will have k 1 as its wave number and string 2 the waves will be having k 2 as its wave property which is its wave number. So k 1 x minus omega t. So where k is less than 0 because you are talking in terms of the left hand side of the string. Now the, what will happen to the reflected wave? As we said once you are having a wave it is very likely to be either reflected or transmitted. So, the reflected wave will be in the opposite direction. So, k and m or mu are same but uh, v1 will be in the opposite direction. Negative sign due to change in direction I have hinted. So, here fr. So, the wave equation expression will be a of r which is the amplitude e raised to minus k1 x minus omega t. Reflected wave x less than um, 0. It is moving in that direction. So, incident wave V K1X reflected wave going in this direction uh, minus K1X. Now, what happens to the transmitted wave? Actually, what is a transmitted wave? Suppose you are having a medium, let us say glass, light passing through a glass. So, in the opposite side, when it is entering a new medium, you get the transmitted wave. So, here transmitted will have a new velocity V2 which is quite natural. At the same time, it will have a new K2 also. So, here the Ft will be At e raised to i K2x minus omega t x greater than 0. Both incident and transmitted wave move in the same direction. Since wave velocities are different, the wavelengths are also different. So, therefore, the comparison of wave velocity and wave numbers of two strings is given by, you know, k is 2 pi by lambda. Lambda and k actually are inversely proportional. So, lambda 1 by lambda 2 is k2 by k1 and which will be equal to v1 by v2 because omega is equal to kv. So, k1 v1 is equal to k2 v2. So, which implies k2 by k1 will be equal to v1 by v2. Now, here what is the summary? So, fxt a wave traveling in a string tied in a knot of two strings tied in a knot will have incident wave, reflected wave for x less than 0 and a transmitted wave for uh, x greater than 0 where ai, ar and at are amplitudes. Since uh, fxt is a continuous wave function at x is equal to 0, we are not seeing any discontinuity. So, we will apply the limit. That is the left hand limit will be equal to the right hand limit. That is wave function is continuous in the boundary if it is approaching from left and if it is approaching from right. That is why we have written o minus and o plus. To the left of 0 to the right of 0. Similarly, derivative of the wave function also will be continuous at o raised to minus and uh, dou f by dou f o plus. O oh, like the uh, 0 plus. So, uh, the, so uh, it at x is equal to 0 if you put the point as so. Actually, uh, left of 0, right of 0. Similarly, derivative also left of 0, right of 0. It will be same. So, at a boundary at x is equal to 0 in this case. For a continuous function, the wave function is continuous. 
and the derivatives of fr continuous this is a known thing we learned from uh, quantum mechanics postulates so which we are going to uh, do it here also so it here implies that at x is equal to 0 ai plus ar is equal to at how do we derive that see uh, we have gone this equation substitute x is equal to 0 here so this will be left hand side will be equal to right hand side according to the boundary conditions for a continuous function so at x is equal to 0 this is e raised to i minus i omega t e raised to minus i omega t e raised to minus i omega t so e raised to minus, uh, minus i omega t if you cancel you will get ai plus ar is equal to at this i have given as hint that is ai is equal to e raised to i k0 o minus omega t minus i k10 minus omega t is equal to at e raised to k20 minus omega t so this is 0 this is 0 so this is 1 so e raised to minus i omega t uh, will cancel raised to i omega t there will be uh, minus i omega t minus i omega t so all of them cancel you get ai plus ar is equal to at, at x is equal to 0 so first boundary condition we have satisfied what is the second boundary condition that is derivative of the function will be continuous due to the left and right hand limit that is 0 minus and 0 plus that is if the derivative is approaching from left or right both should be 0 so you because it is e raised to see here it is e raised to i k x take the derivative you are differentiating with respect to x here you will get k1 here you will get k1 here you will get k2 so here it will be k1 ai minus ar is equal to k2 at this is the boundary condition 2 from 1 and 2 we try to because there are three variables let us take ai ar and at actually they are not variables they are amplitudes so there are three amplitudes and two equations so we will express the secondary effects let us say reflection and transmission in terms of the incident wavelength incident amplitude so our reflected amplitude will be k1 minus k2 by k2 k1 plus k2 ai this you can easily solve using 1 and 2 and at will be 2 k1 by k1 plus k2 ai now in terms of velocities we will write ar is equal to v2 minus v1 by v1 plus v2 and at will be 2 v2 by v1 plus v2 because you know k1 by k2 is, is actually is equal to v2 by v1 so in the previous case k1 by k2 you uh, divide by k1 by k2 k2 so what you will get here you will get if you if you convert it what you are going to get you are get you are going to get v2 minus v1 by v1 plus v2 2 v2 by v1 plus v2 so once you are done with this we will write in terms of real amplitudes and phases earlier we had absorbed the phase e raised to i delta you will remember then in, uh, when we are expressing the wave function actually there was a i kx plus omega t plus phi plus delta let us say that phase we had absorbed now we will release it so it will be ar e raised to i delta r because there are three waves involved so we must mention the three phases phase of the incident wave phase of the reflected wave and phase of the transmitted wave so nothing just to write the real amplitude and the phase on both sides okay now once you are done this is the final expression actually once you are done we will discuss the special cases what are the special cases second string is lighter that is m2 is greater than m1 or mu2 is greater than mu1 what is mu2 mass per unit length so when mu2 is greater than mu1 v2 will be greater than v1 why because we know tension is same in both strings v is, is equal to root of t by mu if mu is less then v is more so then the phases are same that is and if the phases are same that is delta t is equal to delta r is equal to delta i our equation 5 is positive because v2 minus v1 here also delta r, uh, or r is equal to delta t and here also 2 v, uh, v2 v1 by v2 so both are uh, same as before and ai is positive nothing new but special case 2 is if uh, first string is lighter that is mu1 is less than mu2 when mu that is first string is lighter this means first string's velocity is greater then what happens to this equation this equation acquires a minus sign so then ar will become minus v2 minus v1 by v1 plus v2 is negative so reflected wave is out of phase of the incident wave by 180 degree so our delta is equal to delta t is fine but delta r will be delta r plus phi 180 degree out of phase that is if the incident wave is moving in this direction reflected wave will have an opposite phase 
So that is uh, opposite phase by that it will be opposite phase by 180 degree. That will be reflected wave will be exactly upside down of the incident wave. So there. Now let us modify. So our it's not A2 AR. So AR is V1 minus V2 by V1 plus V2. Once you are done with this, let us take this special case 3. What is this special case 3? Special case 3, if the second string is un infinitely massive such that mu2 is much much greater. So v1 is approximately or around 0. That is v is equal to root t by u. If u mu is very 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 massive, then v almost it cannot move. It will be almost 0. So then what happens? AR is equal to AI and AT is equal to 0. Look into this equation. Here, what will happen if, uh, if uh, v2 is 0? All these terms AR will be equal to AI. And what will happen to the uh, transmitted wave? Here say 2 V2 by V1 plus V2. This is 0. Numerator is 0. So the transmitted amplitude is 0. What does it say? If the second uh, string is highly massive, what will happen? There will not be any transmitted wave. There will be only incident and reflected wave. So as I have shown in the diagram, there will be no transmitted wave because there will be transmitted wave amplitude is 0. Because the velocity of propagation is 0 here. So this is a mathematical derivation. What you have to remember is how to derive these expressions. Thank you.